When I was younger, people would always ask, what do you want to be when you grow up? And kids would rattle off the classics. You know, vet, astronaut, teacher. Those kids were usually just sucking up. But no one ever said programmer. And that's probably because they just didn't hate themselves yet. There is a YouTube channel called Fireship that goes over topics that basically every programmer should know. And recently they posted a video titled 80% of programmers are not happy. Why? In the video, he goes over six reasons why programmers are not happy in today's world. Now, I'm more of a hardware engineer, but I do a lot of programming for my job and I work with a lot of programmers. So there were some additional reasons I thought of that were not included in Fireship's video that I think may explain why programmers are so unhappy today. But just to catch you up, let me tell you the six reasons Fireship mentioned. Reason number one, money. Yes, programmers make a lot, but they don't make as much as you think they do. Those day in the life videos in some big city are often embellished and misleading. Reason number two is technical debt. Technical debt is basically when programmers write code that is hideous, disgusting, abhorrent, but it works. And then they just keep writing code on top of that. It makes it very hard for anyone to understand how the code works. And it might not even make sense to the person that wrote it. And then when someone tries to work with that code and they change one little thing, it all falls apart. The code essentially looks like a late stage Jenga tower. Reason number three is the hustle or die culture. Typically demands are unrealistic and that's because they're made by people that have no idea what it takes to get things done. This leads to higher turnover rate. Programmers are incentivized to find a new job because A, they get out of their current position and B, they're probably gonna make more money. It's almost like programmers are incentivized to cheat on their current employer, always having one foot out the door because it can only benefit them. There is basically no down side to jumping ship unless of course you jump onto another ship you hate which leads to reason four which is that programmers have a cog life programmers just become a cog in some other machine you just go through the motions and you feel unhappy because you don't know if your work is contributing to the world but let's say you do get lucky and you land the perfect job that still does not make you immune from reason five and that's layoff season even if you land in a favorable position Who's to say you won't get laid off in the next second? Reason number six is health issues. It is simply not healthy to sit as long as programmers do. We used to be hunter-gatherers. Now we look up Excel shortcuts so we don't get carpal tunnel syndrome as early. There's no avoiding it. It's just about delaying it at this point. So those are the six reasons Fireship says why programmers are not happy today. But let me offer you three additional reasons. Reason number one, a lack of recognition. I find that capable programmers and engineers, really any capable person in tech, experience a lack of recognition because they're just doing their job. There's an expectation from managers that doing your job successfully is the bare minimum. So they start to take you for granted. Now I'm not saying you should be praised for simply showing up, but if good work goes unrecognized for too long, the person doing the work will start to feel neglected. Simply put, there's no feedback loop. Managers always espouse and tout clear communication and feedback, yet are often hard pressed to engage in it themselves. There's a clear double standard, and they don't even give programmers the decency of hiding it behind a thin veil. Anyone with parents knows how frustrating it is for your parent to tell you to do something that they don't even do themselves. The classic cheeky line that bad parents love to play on repeat is, do as I say, not as I do. And hearing that line as a working adult is just as frustrating as hearing it as a kid who can't eat ice cream for dinner. And it's not like managers aren't capable of giving feedback because you get plenty of it when you mess something up. But when you do things right, they don't find the same need to let you know. And this often leads to programmers feeling neglected. My second reason is there's no tangible effect of your work. Fireship mentioned this when he said, you feel unhappy if you feel like your work is contributing nothing to the world. And I wanna build on that point. You see people that should be miserable at their job because maybe it doesn't pay enough or the benefits aren't great, but they're still able to find satisfaction because they're able to see the effect of their work. There is something so human about being able to see the effect of something you did. Programmers don't have this luxury. In fact, it's kind of backwards in a way. They work hard only to see the stock price of their company completely shit the bed. They do everything right, and the only feedback they get is that it's not having a big enough impact to make any noticeable difference. You merge some fix and that's the end of it. Their hard work goes into some nebulous blob and they never see it again. It's like working in a car factory where you only work on one part. The company swears they make cars with your part and that people love the cars, but you never really see anyone drive the car. And the things you read online all say that the car sucks. You do all this hard work and the company keeps telling you that you're making an impact, but that's only so you keep doing the work for them. Making an impact is something people have to experience firsthand for it to feel real. 
And at these tech companies, that is an opportunity that programmers rarely get to experience. And my last reason is that there are unclear motives behind decisions. Often companies make decisions that they have a hard time justifying, but you have to follow them because they make the rules. You know, they're the parent in charge. There are a lot of parallels between bad corporate leadership and bad parenting. Right now, in a post-pandemic world, there are a lot of companies that are making the decision to force, sorry, uh, strongly encourage people back into the office. And when you ask the leaders of these companies why, they always say the same thing to increase collaboration and increase productivity. But do they know that this change will bring that desired effect? Do they have data that supports that? For companies that make decisions based on data, a lot of them are kind of willy-nilly. This example specifically, they're basically just saying, I just feel like the vibe would be better if we were all on site, you know? Oftentimes, these decisions are just the company grasping at straws. It's basically just cope. Going back to the bad parents analogy, what happens when a bad parent makes a mistake? Do they admit it? No. They blame the kid and make them do something that has nothing to do with the original problem so as to take the blame off themselves. Because as we know, when there's a conflict, only the guilty party faces punishment. So, whoever's being punished must be the guilty one. I'll wrap this video up just like a high school valedictorian and quote some old famous guy. In this case, it's Thomas Paine. In his book titled Common Sense, he says that time makes more converts than reason, which essentially means that people often do things not because they're reasonable, but because that's how they've always been done. But you can't brute force happiness the same way you can brute force code. If things stay the way they have always been, nothing will ever get better. But it's too scary for these companies to take big swings because what if it doesn't work out? You know, they say the devil you know is better than the devil you don't. And that's also why all these programmers feel like they're living in hell. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next one.